what's up welcome back to the vlog um yes y'all it's a seafood boil going on seafood boil and a story time so yes it's it's a juicy story <laughs> but let's get into what all we have here we have the dungeness crab this is my first time trying this y'all <gasps> ah, i need a thumbnail <laughs> this thing is so big wait a minute <gasps> um yeah we got dungeness crab what else do we have you know a little lemon little lemon because you need a little lemon with the seafood we got some andouille sausage right here some eggs shrimp some corn y'all see the corn on the cob we also have some of be love smack licious sauce right here y'all yes this sauce is so good um i also have some cocktail sauce for my shrimp because her sauce is a little bit spicy and it's a little salty on top of that but yeah y'all oh this shrimp is so good i cooked this shrimp to perfection look at that it's not going to be rubbery at all let me just get a bite right quick mm -hmm. I also, I don't know if I mentioned, but I also have some cucumber, some mini cucumbers, because this sauce gets spicy. It gets live. Oh, look at that. It's chunky. Mmm. Mmm. Look at that sauce. Yes, her sauce gets is spicy, so the cucumber helps calm down the spice. But um, yeah. Let's get into the sausage right there, the andouille sausage. Let's get into the story time. Okay, y'all. This is like my second boil because I already ate and then I was like, you know what, let me do a um let me do a YouTube video. Let me film a vlog. Since I got this seafood boil already and I also got some sweet tea. Sweet tea, y'all. That's what this is, sweet tea. Okay, y'all, so. So, let's get into the story. So, y'all know my oldest daughter. Um, if y'all, anybody raised teenagers, y'all already know them teenage years be rough. So, hmm. We gonna get into the story, but hold on. Let me just. Mm 
Okay. So let's get into the story. <laughs> Where do I start? So this was when my oldest daughter was like ninth grade probably. I think it was about ninth grade. So her and I, y'all, this girl, <laughs> So, yeah, her and I were, like, at odds with each other because she wanted to, like, have her own opinions about things and she wanted to hang out with her friends and stuff and not be focused on school. So, one weekend, one weekend, she's on punishment. So, it was on a Friday night, y'all. This is what happened, okay? So Friday night, she come in the house after school. She and her room real quiet, not saying anything. So I know she up to something. I'm like, why is she so quiet? She must be up to something. So I go in her room. She packing up her stuff. I'm like, where are you going? Because she was actually on punishment because we I had got a call from the school. So I'm like, where are you going? You know you're on punishment. You're not going anywhere. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm going over my friend Mia house. And I was like, no, you're not. So... She waits until I get occupied on the phone, walks out the house, and goes over her friend Mia's house. So, I decide, you know, yeah, I'm tired of going back and forth with her. I'm just going to let her have this. I'm going to let her go over her friend's Mia, her friend Mia's house, and we're going to talk about it when she gets home. Because I'm not about to argue with her. So, I call Mia's mom. It, it gets, like, late, y'all. It's, like, around, like, 12 o'clock. I had already texted Mia's mom. I was like, hey, she can't spend a night. So um, I know she had packed up a bag to go over your house, but she can't spend a night. So make sure you send her home. Mia's mom like, okay. So it gets like around like 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, why is she not home yet? She should be home by now. Like me and mama know to send her home by now. It was late. I called Mia's mama like, hey, what's going on? She tells me, oh, her dad came and got her. I'm like, what? Mind y'all, her dad and I, her, her, that's not even her biological dad. This is my ex. This, this, this ex has been in our life since um, my oldest was probably three. So three until however old you are until about um, eighth grade. So about eighth grade, he had been in our life. So he had been in her life, you know, as a, as a father figure. So I'm like, her father came and got her. She was like, yeah, in a truck. Don't he drive a truck? I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, oh, okay. So at this point, I'm upset because I haven't talked to him in probably about a year since her whole ninth grade year. So I'm like, I don't even talk to him. Why would he come pick her up? So I call him. I call him up right quick. Ring, ring, ring. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, where's my daughter at? Bring my daughter here. Here he go. He ain't listening to nothing I'm saying. He just like... Oh, you got a new man, huh? You got a new man? You got a new man, shorty? Okay, so... <laughs> I'm basically getting nowhere with him. He's hanging up the phone, yelling about other stuff that doesn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? So, I... I'm like, I'm about to call the police because it's Friday night. I don't got time for this. I don't know where he lives at. Or anything, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where he at. I know he's somewhere in Atlanta, but, like, I don't have his address. I haven't spoken with him in almost a whole year. He in a whole new relationship. You know, like, bring me my child. This is not your child biologically. Bring me my child. So, I'm getting nowhere with him. I think to myself, like, okay, boom. You know, I ain't getting nowhere with him. His logic is, like, not right. He, his logic is he, he is just out out the window it's not there right now he's he's very emotional you know clearly he's still upset about the breakup so I'm like you know let me do the next best thing let me call somebody that probably thinks like him because you know she raised him so you know I call his mama I call his mama she answered you know I call his mama she answered the phone praise the lord this is said, Carol hey, Hey, Miss Carol, how you doing? Her. Blessed 
and okay. highly favored. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, yes, God is good. But she one of those churchy people. Really into church, but she, her and I never really got along. She always had something sideways to say out of her neck because she didn't believe in having children before marriage and she didn't want her son to be with me because I already had a child. So we had just a rocky relationship. So like, yeah, God is good. And you know, she all like all the time, all the time. And so I say, have you spoken with your son lately? And she goes to say, Yes, I just talked to him. Yeah, we just spoke. And he just moved into his new home. Praise the Lord. And I was like, oh yeah, him and his new stepchildren and his new girlfriend. I'm so glad they found a place that could um, fit all of them comfortably. Ain't God good? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Anyway, your son has my daughter, and he won't give her back. Um, do you have the address to his new place, or if you're not going to give me the address or anything, um, can you tell him to um, bring me my daughter? Give me my daughter back. You know what I'm saying? This is what I'm telling her. Like, bring me my child. And basically, can you talk some sense into him? You know what I'm saying? Can you talk some sense into him? And she's all like... But you know he loves her like his own, so I don't, you know, there's that. You know, so I'm like, okay, we're getting nowhere here. So I said, listen. Listen, Miss Ma'am. Okay? I do not want to have to call the police and tell them that your son has kidnapped my daughter because she's not biologically she's not his um his child i don't care how long he's been in our lives she is not his child so he needs to bring me back my daughter so you know what i'm saying that's basically how that conversation went she goes on to say well now see now now i raised him better than that so you know i know this is just all a misunderstanding it's all a misunderstanding and I'm going to talk to him because, you know, I raised him better than that. I know that. So, I'm like, yeah, ma'am, well, we've all fallen short in the eye of the Lord. <laughs> so, I hang up with her. I'm like, okay, I'm about to get nowhere with this. I'm not about to get anywhere with her. So, it's like maybe going on Saturday. It's early in the morning, y'all. She was taken around like i don't know 11 o'clock so at this point i'm like i'm getting nowhere where her is late i gotta go to work tomorrow well i gotta go to work tonight because at that time i worked at the club so i'm like i gotta go to work tonight and i need to know where she's at so i'm like i'm probably not gonna even be able to go to work so i didn't even go to work that night i don't think because i was looking for her so i call him up one more time before i get ready to call the police because i'm about to call the police I call him up one more time, and I'm like, listen, listen, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you want. Because at this, at this point, she, my daughter's been taken. I don't know where she at, y'all. I don't know who she with. I don't know this new woman. I don't know this lady's kids, and I don't know him at this point, because he did some stuff that's crazy during our breakup, and I just don't know him anymore. So, so I'm like, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you want. But what I do know is that I possess a certain set of skills. And him, he just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. and hangs up the phone. Okay, he hangs up the phone. So I was like, all right, you want to play games? I called the police. I was like, yo, um, he got my daughter over there. He's not giving me my daughter back. I don't know where he lives at. So I gave him his number. They call over there. You know, I guess he, I don't know what he said to them, but I'm about to, y'all about to kind of find out what he said to them. So I called, the police called me back. They're like, yeah, ma'am, she's over there. Sounds like she's safe. Everything's good. He said he's the father and he has her and this is a civil um, issue. You need to file, um, so this is civil court. I was like, what? I'm like, what? He is not her biological father. I know he didn't tell you he was her father. 
So y'all just called over there. And I was like, did y'all get an address? Uh, no, ma'am. We're not like, able to give you his address. Y'all can't give me his address. But he has my biological daughter, who he is not related to, over at his house somewhere where I don't know where she's at. They was like, yeah, basically. So I was like, all right, what can I do then? What what can I do to go get my daughter? They were like, oh, well, you need to go to the police district and in, in where he lives at and then have them escort you to his house. So I'm like, okay, well, how am I going to have, have them escort me to his house if y'all won't give me the address? The police was, I'm, I'm like, in what district do I go to when I don't have the address? I was like, can you at least tell me what district? So they was like, oh, uh, well, we can give you the zip code. So I'm like, okay, fine, you know. Give me the zip code. So th they give me the zip code. I drive over. I Google it. I drive over to that area. This is like Saturday. This happened on Saturday morning because I just went to sleep. Like I got tired around two because I was just exhausted from all of this going back and forth with him. So on um, Saturday morning, this all happened on Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, I get the um, zip code i go and i'm driving around this area all saturday morning because i went to the police station the police are like in that area i went to their district police they're like oh if you don't got an address we can't help you i'm like well can't you call the other district that got the address or can't can i give you his number y'all call him they call him he tell the police the same thing oh this my daughter her her mama crazy blase blase so i'm like and they believe in him so they like oh we can't help you i was like oh okay Okay, I got her birth certificate and everything. He's not on her birth certificate. He's not her father. I'm like, he's not, he's lying. So, it's just crazy how the police wouldn't help me. It's really scary how the police would not help me. But I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm driving around because it's really a small city. So, I'm driving around the whole city. Just hopefully I'll see her outside. I'm really in my car listening to my intuition tell me to drive around. So, I... Eventually, I need gas. So, I stop at a gas station. Well, I don't think I found her that night. No, I didn't find her that day. So, I'm just driving around. I didn't find her that Saturday. So, I went home, went to sleep. I think I went to work. Yeah, I went to the, I went to work that night. I got off of work like at 5 a.m. I get off of work at 5 a.m. I hop in the car and I'm like, I'm about to drive around. So, I ain't even get no, no sleep. I'm still up, y'all, 20, almost 24 hours. I was up off Saturday. I went to work around, like, probably, like, 12 o'clock because the club don't really start jumping until 12. So I went around 12 o'clock to kind of scope the crowd out or whatever, and then I got out of there around 5.30, 6 o'clock a.m. So I'm out of the club, driving around around 5.30, 6 o'clock, looking for my daughter. So... Or, you know, just, like, looking for his truck. Because at this point, it's so early in the morning, I don't even, like, his, they, the kids ain't going to be outside. So, I'm looking for his truck and just trying to see if I can find her. I couldn't really find her. So, I go home, catch a few disease. I'm like, let me go home, go to sleep a little bit because I'm tired. I'm not thinking right. I've been up, you know, kind of. I've been working at the club, so I didn't have a drink or two. I'm like, I need to just go home and lay down because I'm getting really mad and I can't even think straight. So I go home, lay down, wake up refreshed. A few hours later, I wake up refreshed. It's now like around three o'clock. I went home around 10, it's now three o'clock. I drive back over to that area, driving around, driving around, driving around. And I don't know, my intuition led me to this one area and I was just looking in this area going up and down the streets. And then I looked and I needed gas. So I stopped at the gas station. This gas station has a restaurant attached to it. So I'm kind of hungry too. I'm like, damn, I'm hungry. So I get something to eat from the little, I get some gas. Then I pull up in, into the little, um, to the front where the restaurant is at. And I sit there, I park right there, order some food from the restaurant. I'm casually talking to the guy at the restaurant because they sell Polish boys, which is like a Cleveland thing. So I'm like... Oh, y'all sell Polish boys. I'm super geek, so I want to get a Polish boy. But these are not really like Polish boys. I was like, where y'all get the Polish sausage from? Because uh, <laughs> y'all, I just be talking to people. So I'm talking to him about it. Like, ain't nothing going on in my life. Like, always. I'm always talking to somebody. And you, you just wouldn't know that I'd be going through a lot unless I tell you. So I get my food. I go outside and I'm eating my food. I'm sitting in the car eating my food. And at this point, I've kind of just like calmed down. 
I just kind of just let go. Have you ever been like in a in a place where you just like let go and just like let God? I just was like, it is what it is. Like I'm a finder. I ain't even tripping no more. So I'm sitting in the car eating my fries. Everything cool. I'm flipping through my phone. Flipping through my phone. And I noticed that I had downloaded the spoof app. Because I, I was doing something with the spoof app. So I was like, oh shoot. I got his phone number. So I put in the spoof app, his, um, his, I changed, because you can put whatever phone number you want to say that you're calling from in the spoof app, and it's a fake call app, where you can change your voice, you can put whatever number you want to show up on the caller ID, you can put even whatever name you want to show up on the caller ID. So I put 911 as the name, I put the, the telephone number to the police district that um, they stayed in, and then I put my voice to mail because when I was in the um, police station, it was a male officer that called him. So I put it on there. So I called him, right? And the app gives you like a minute or like three minutes free. You get three free minutes. So I call him. I'm like, hey, Mr. Sir, um... This is so and so from the police officers district, and it's Saturday. I was like, it's Sunday, and we got to make sure that the child is in school. So we got to make sure we got all your information to send a social worker over there, since she's your child and she's gonna be living with you. He like, yeah, officer, cause her mama ain't, her mama is, her, her mama crazy, just talking crazy about me. So I'm on the phone like, oh okay, like this is what you've been telling the police officers, and they've been listening to you. Oh okay. So, yeah, so he's just going off, and then I'm like, so we need your address. Y'all, he gives me the address. This is how I got the address. He gives me the address. I'm like, oh, okay. So once I get the address, it's like all bets are off. Like, now I'm about to be playing because I'm really a playful person, and everything is almost a joke to me. And I can find the humor even in just the worst situations. So <laughs> at this point, when I get the address, like, all bets are off. So he on the phone like, yeah, officer, we're married, and this is my daughter. So I'm like... She, I started saying crazy stuff. I was like, she said y'all was never married. He was like, yes, we was married. I got the marriage certificate, officer. And he just going back and forth with me. And the phone is like, oh, you got 30 seconds. So I was like, she, she said y'all was never married, sir. He was like, oh, we weren't married. I was like, no, you weren't, sir. It says right here that you weren't. He was like, yes, we are. I don't know what you looking at. <laughs> and then next thing you know, the phone hangs up. So when the phone hangs up, y'all... This is what I do. I put the address into the GPS. Why am I like five minutes away from where he lives? I pull up. Sure did. I pull up. I pull up. My daughter outside on the hoverboard living her best life. Her and her and her dad's girlfriend's new the kids. His her his, his new stepkids outside playing with the family dog on the hoverboard. So y'all, I'm with the shits. Like I I'm I can be petty. So I hop out the car, animals love me, children love me. I hop out the car, the dog runs up to me, so happy to see me. I put the dog in my car, it's my dog now. It's mine, you wanna steal my daughter? I'm about to take your dog. So it's my dog. So I put the dog, you know what I'm saying? I put the dog in the car, and then next thing you know, him and his girlfriend pull up. I guess they had went to the store, they pull up. She hop out the car like, And I was like, yeah, I told you. Y'all thought y'all y'all thought we had a taking situation going on here. You weren't about to take my daughter and thought I wasn't about to find her. Y'all crazy. So yeah, he hopped out the car like Shawty, what the hell? I was like, yeah. Oh, like, Shawty. I'm here. And she, you know, I got that dog in my car. He like, give us our dog. And she all uh, over his shoulder, like. You know, and I was like, let me give them their dog. Because she was on the phone calling the police. She was like, I'm calling the police. So I gave them their dog or whatever. And then, yeah, that's basically what happened. That's just so crazy, y'all. Like, I really don't understand what he thought he was about to do with my daughter. Like, you thought you was about to just, I don't know, get her in school? 
I don't know, but the police ended up coming and then the police was like, had to um, basically escort my daughter out to the, my car with her little book bag full of whatever she had packed. And we drove home. And lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Y'all, that is such, so toxic. It's crazy because I hadn't even spoken to him in a whole year. But anyways, y'all. I don't think I can eat any more of this. Because like I said, I did eat before I started filming. But it is good. Anyways, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's been real. Y'all be easy. Peace.